Okay, so this is a new chapter, 16, uh, on kinematics of a rigid body. Although you will see uh, we're going to talk about systems of interconnected bodies uh, in two dimensions. So it's planar kinematics of a rigid body. This is an important subject because in um, engineering there are many uh, systems like uh, gear transmissions and mechanisms that uh, operate in plane or in parallel planes. And um, for this lecture we're going to look at uh, classification of various types of uh, planar uh, motion of rigid bodies and then uh, look at translation and rotation uh, about a fixed axis and then uh, study of planar motion using absolute motion analysis. Um, so in terms of classification uh, we can have uh, what is called rectilinear translation uh, where a line fixed to the body remains parallel to itself and points on a body move on straight lines. We can have uh, what is called curvilinear translation so the same a fixed line on the body remains parallel to itself as the body moves and uh, points on the body uh, perform uh, curvilinear or uh, trace curvilinear path that are identical but offset as the points are uh, distinct. And then we have rotation about fixed axis, uh, very common in engineering. Um, and, um, and then there's the general planar motion. Uh, and you'll see general planar motion is uh, can be considered a combination of translation and rotation happening simultaneously. Um, here there's an example of a uh, uh, mechanism uh, could be that of a steam locomotive if piston is the input. Uh, so the piston reciprocates, perform translational motion, uh, the flywheel rotates uh, and because the radius of the flywheel and the radius of this crank are the same um, and uh, with the help of inertia uh, then the uh, connecting rod here performs a curvilinear translation. So uh, rotation about fixed axis, rotation about fixed axis um, and then the curvilinear translation, translation for the piston and general plane motion. I have prepared a um, a working model. By the way, this one is a uh, uh, animated GIF showing an example of a mechanism with motion in. Uh, it's a four-cylinder uh, engine, and the moving parts uh, perform planar motion in parallel planes. Um, okay, so what I did, I prepared um, a working model simulation, and it shows the. Um, uh, the mechanism in the book uh, and as you can see if I hit run uh, the, the mechanism moves is driven from the disc uh, consider a flywheel and in green there are uh, velocity vectors uh, rather acceleration green uh, is acceleration blue are velocities and um, the motor does not perform continuous rotation uh, like it is in, uh, the way it's inferred in the book um, rather oscillates but again it's driven the motors here and as you can see translational motion velocity are the same acceleration is the same curvilinear translation uh, we do have um, I, uh, same uh, velocities the blue vectors same acceleration as the green vectors and then for ge the general uh, planar motion, uh, different points have different velocities and different accelerations. Uh, for the rotating body like the uh, this uh, uh, rocker here, uh, you can see that the uh, velocity and acceleration uh, vectors, they uh, remain parallel to each other and they're like uh, on, a, on an array that uh, converges to zero at the uh, pivoting point and likewise for velocity. Velocity of course as we know um, it's uh, it's going to be tangent to the path um, and um, so yeah I'm, I'm, uh, I'm stopping the simulation go, uh, going back to the we're going back to the lecture. Um, okay so translational motion is one of the easiest to uh, analyze 
and what we we have here is a, a fixed reference frame and then there's the body that translates and there's a reference frame attached to the uh, moving body it's fixed relative to the moving body and moves together with it we have point A, the origin of the moving reference frame and if we can monitor it with a position vector RA uh, the, the origin A of the moving reference frame and if we're given a um, uh, any point in the body uh, that we know its position vector RB with respect to A then the absolute motion uh, of point B that is about a fixed frame can be um, studied um, with the aid of, uh, of this RB uh, uh, or the position vector okay so the vector equation uh, that holds is that RA uh, vector to the origin of the uh, of a known point on the body and then plus vector uh, a b uh, which is r b with respect to a equals r b the absolute uh, position of point b um, if we're interested in velocity we take the time derivative of this vector uh, equation and because uh, r of, or of b with respect to a has a uh, constant magnitude and does not change um, orientation then um, does not change orientation then the time derivative it's going to be uh, time derivative is going to be zero so velocity of b is velocity of a and any point b will have the same velocity as a as vector so both magnitude and orientation are the same something we saw in the working model simulation if we take second time derivative acceleration of b is going to be acceleration of a um, and again something that we uh, uh, we recognized on the on the simulation um, rotation about fixed axis um, so here what we have is a rigid body and uh, we define an axis of rotation um, and uh, in the study of the uh, rotation of the body uh, it's useful to define a positive orientation of rotation axis um, uh, you can consider this say to be the z-axis we should have an x-axis could be this uh, can use the drawing tool so we can easily have uh, call this the x-axis we can have a y-axis here okay so rotating x towards y gives us a positive along the z-axis um, and uh, using right hand or a, a right hand screw um, we can associate to the positive orientation of the axis of rotation uh, the positive uh, change of angle uh, theta the angle theta as you can see is measured from a fixed location to a, a point of uh, interest uh, radial location of a point of interest um, and then um, we have uh, omega it's the time rate of change of uh, angular position theta and alpha is the angular acceleration which is uh, the second time derivative of uh, the position angle theta um, okay the the travel of the point something we learn in chapter 12 on uh, particle kinematics so the travel of a point is going to be uh, radius r times um, the angle theta in uh, in radians. So uh, displacement s uh, of the point uh, is going to be theta times r. Um, okay. So measures uh, the angular displacement measure in radians. We prefer radians, um, and then for angular velocity. Uh, time rate of change of theta uh, units radians per second uh, and um, the acceleration alpha is uh, time first time derivative of uh, angular velocity or second time derivative of angular position theta um, we can um, operate with uh, with equation 12 uh, or rather uh, 16 2 and by saying uh, d omega something we uh, that we've done in chapter 12 on rectilinear motion so I say d omega over d theta times d 
theta over dt. Um, and what do we have? We have um, uh, this part equal to um, to omega, and from this part or this equation, this uh, uh, rewriting, uh, we obtain equation 16.4, which is useful uh, in an integral form. Um, and um, uh, something um, that we uh, we encounter in rectilinear motion in chapter 12 um, for uh, alpha being accelerated linear acceleration, theta being s, a linear displacement, and uh, um, omega being velocity. In case of a constant angular acceleration, we um, we obtain in a process similar to again chapter 12 particle kinematics uh, obtain these three equations uh, which are two by two um, uh, independent the third any third one can be obtained from uh, the other two and um, so what do we have we have constant angular velocity uh, 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 angular acceleration I'm sorry uh, a, uh, alpha C so uh, angular velocity uh, the later moment is initial angular velocity plus uh, t times um, angular acceleration and uh, equivalent to linear displacement in s we have the second equation and then remember this was was v squared equals d0 plus 2 acceleration times uh, parentheses s minus s0 so now we have it written in terms of uh, theta 0 and theta again uh, they are 2 by 2 uh, independent the third one uh, if you're writing an attempt to solve a problem, you're not going to uh, provide um, information towards the solution. So you, know, you use either uh, uh, any two of the three in uh, in uh, problem when solving problem. Um, okay, so um, the uh, discussion continues with um, the study of the motion of a point. Uh, on the rigid body other than on the axis of rotation so a, a point uh, or any point P performs or uh, circular uh, or moves on circles and um, we uh, uh, recognize that uh, the displacement is going to be uh, the displacement is going to be um, R the uh, radius of the path times the uh, the angle uh, uh, and then uh, infinitesimally uh, you know differentiating we we have the small increase in the split curvilinear displacement uh, ds is going to be r times um, the corresponding increase a uh, small increase in the angle theta um, and uh, a velocity now velocity vector is tangent to the path uh, like in any curvilinear motion and its magnet is going to be uh, uh, omega angular velocity times r why is that is because I have we have velocity is ds over dt and we can write ds as uh, r d theta over dt and this is, uh, or rather without r, is going to be omega. Um, okay. In, um, in terms of um, uh, analyzing the, or observing the motion of the point P with a vector that is not in plane in the, uh, with the uh, path of P, uh, rather is, uh, is offset, as you can see here, then uh, we uh, we have this uh, uh, vector equation that um, uh, yields the vector velocity vector v. Um, so it's a cross product between uh, the omega vector and omega vector is um, uh, aligned with the axis of rotation and. Um, 
the uh, convention of uh, assigning uh, plus or minus to uh, omega vector was discussed earlier. So uh, omega is an oriented vector parallel to the axis of rotation and velocity of, of a point can be written as the cross product between the uh, omega vector and uh, any position vector um, rp uh, that is measured from the axis of rotation. So the, the end of the um, the tail of the vector has to be on the axis of rotation, the head it's to the point. Okay. Um, now if the uh, if RP is in plane, uh, that is R, it's in the plane of uh, the motion of the particle, uh, same can be written, uh, same equation, uh, and um, um, it's it's the way uh, the most convenient way of, uh, of utilizing. But sometimes uh, we have no choice, and we need to operate with a um, off-center position vector. For acceleration, um, we know from circular motion that uh, point P has a uh, uh, tangential acceleration. So if uh, the particle is speeding or uh, reducing losing speed as it's perf um, performing its motion, uh, in this case moving on a, on a circle. Um, so that will, uh, is going to be um, uh, alpha uh, angular acceleration times um, a radius from uh, to the point, or radius of the path. Um, we learn in curvilinear motion that um, the tangential uh, acceleration is um, um, dv over dt, but we learn how to express um, uh, this as a, as a function of theta, and this is how this first equation is obtained. For the second equation, it gives us a normal acceleration. Normal acceleration points to the center of rotation, O. Uh, we use the, uh, the second equation from uh, uh, from curvilinear motion using normal tangential and binormal coordinates. And here, uh, likewise, we replace velocity with, um, uh, with omega r. Uh, radius of curvature is going to be r. And we get the, uh, the equation that, uh, for, for uh, normal acceleration of a point in circular motion. Um, OK. Um, the, uh, problem is uh, sometimes comes to to uh, operating as as vectors um, with the velocity and acceleration of the point, and um, the velocity of the point um, as um, as a vector. We uh, we had it earlier for acceleration. Um, through differentiation of the velocity vector, uh, we get the um, uh, ultimately we get this form, and we identify this as being the tangential acceleration vector. And then this other term is the normal acceleration vector. And again, we uh, we made use of a uh, point that is uh, rather uh, a position vector R P that is off. The plane of um, uh, rotation of point P. Um, if RP becomes the uh, radial uh, position vector, uh, then uh, it's uh, simplified in for the um, the normal acceleration and um, uh, becomes uh, scalar omega squared times R and with a minus in front showing that the normal acceleration points to the center of rotation. Um, okay, um, some um, a review of important points um, and uh, they're, they're, they're listed here. Uh, we're going to implement them when solving problems. Um, here's an example of a, a gear transmission and we have um, an omega of B in an omega of C and 
uh, they could also accelerate so you have alpha of C and alpha uh, rather of B and alpha of C of C okay and um, um, the way these work is um, uh, so gears are similar to if teeth are very fine or uh, teeth uh, equivalent to uh, friction wheels so would be what is called a peach circle of each gear that are the equivalent of the friction wheel uh, point, their point of contact has the same well, assuming there's no slip in case of friction wheels will have the same velocity whether it belongs to gear B or gear C and we can write the velocity of, uh, of point A uh, from the perspective of gear B by uh, saying RB times omega B uh, or if it's um, um, the conjugate point um, contact point on gear C is going to be RC times times omega C so we have um, this uh, relationship uh, obtained by eliminating velocity uh, between the two points so we have the we have the uh, a means of relating uh, angular velocities um, via the uh, radi of the peach circles of the two gears okay um, for tangential acceleration the same applies if you take the um, uh, RB and RC are constant if you take the time derivative of this relationship you get uh, you will get this other one um, and um, let me say the right thing um, so tangential acceleration is the same the uh, the angular accelerations uh, are uh, related by the same equation I meant to say so I can write um, alpha of B equals alpha of C times that same ratio RC over uh, RB RB okay um, so these are important equations uh, useful when analyzing gears and belt transmissions including um, and, uh, and and friction wheels um, okay so here uh, the author summarized the procedure of analysis uh, was the uh, the most important equations and I looked at these uh, the, uh, the most convenient way is to um, study the if it's the case of a point to study it with uh, uh, with an in-plane vector rather than offset uh, vector um, offset that is uh, originated from a point other than in a plane of motion and for constant angular acceleration we have equations similar to those from um, from rigid body uh, or rather particle kinematics um, and then for um, in, in vector form um, the, uh, the vector equations uh, that sometimes can be useful in the plan to, to solve a couple of problems to show this um, will be uh, those that we, uh, we recognize are. Um, so yes a couple of sample problems um, and um, there's one that we uh, we solved with a with a bucket. It's problem. Um, what was it? Uh, uh, Sixteen four. And um, so that's uh, this one is uh, where acceleration is a uh, linear function of time. It's not constant. So it was a need of uh, of integrating. And then um, one problem sample problem here is where. Uh, uh, there is a there is a, a belt transmission, and uh, we're recognizing that the linear velocity of the belt, okay, the linear velocity of the belt, uh, is the um, uh, tangential velocity of either of the gears. Okay, so um, and likewise for the tangential acceleration. Uh, so uh, the the gear transmission is in a sense similar to to a bell transmission uh, if 
uh, if we just consider this in-between element that is the belt. Uh, so the same applies the tangential velocity. We had gear with internal me uh, with external meshing, and we had um, uh, a point, the contact point, having the same velocity whether it's gear B or gear C. In the belt, we have, assuming inextensible and no slip, so we have any point on the belt, including when it wraps around the pulleys, uh, they have the same velocity and same tangential acceleration as points on the two pulleys or two sheets. Um, okay, so we did this problem in class. We also extended to where we analyzed the, so given this uh, accelerated motion of the motor, uh, well, I'm saying accelerated. Why is that? Because it's a uh, power, a uh, uh, th uh, third power of time. So we have an omega uh, that is not constant and an, uh, an, uh, an angular uh, acceleration that is not zero. So it's accelerated mo uh, uh, motion, not constant. And we also looked at, um, at the tension in the cable uh, as a side problem. Um, okay, so um, we're, we're, we're going to solve additional problems on, uh, on camera. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, fast forward to um, absolute motion analysis. So absolute motion analysis, um, it's used when discussing um, the motion of interconnected bodies uh, like this example here, it's a uh, it's uh, uh, hydraulically actuated uh, side dumping uh, truck um, bed, and um, um, when doing absolute motion analysis, uh, we are uh, interested in uh, finding um, geometric relationships um, like. Uh, uh, triangular ge triangle geometry, law of cosines, um, and then by taking the time derivative once and then a second time, we can find velocity and acceleration. Um, and um, each problem is different. In uh, in a, a cl other class that I'm teaching, you're going to see us using uh, a more systematic method. It's called vector loop, and um, um, that's uh, that has more rigor, uh, I would say. But there, there are certain problems that uh, um, can be solved um, using uh, using this absolute motion analysis. And there are a couple of examples, um, actually three examples. So let's look at them quickly. Uh, this one, the first sample problem, there's um, there's a, a, a disc that pivots about a, a, a point on its uh, periphery. So we have, um, this is the direction in which rotates. I keep on forgetting to. Okay, so this is the direction in which it rotates. Um, and, uh, okay. All right, so, uh, and uh, you can see a angle theta is measured from a fixed direction. This is a follower, it's spring-loaded. It, um, uh, its end is in contact, in contact with the disc. This again pivots about 0.0, uh, and we have indicated the angular uh, velocity, omega angular acceleration. And what relates the displacement of, of the follower is this um, this triangle. So for any uh, uh, or other positions, as the angle theta changes, we'll recognize um, isosceles triangles uh, with two sides equals r. And we can measure, we can calculate displacement x from there. So we have um, from geometry, x is going to be uh, two times that is would be OC and plus CB. The two are equal, so it would be two R cosine theta. Okay. So this is this is the position equation, and then in order to calculate velocity and acceleration of the follower. Uh, of point um, R, which is coincident with B R on the follower B on the disk, we um, we calculate the f uh, for velocity time derivative of uh, of the 
the position equation. Um, so what we end up with is uh, negative 2r uh, sine theta d theta over dt. I uh, need to apply the uh, chain rule uh, since uh, angle theta is function of time. And then for acceleration, we take the velocity and uh, calculate the, the derivative. And um, so uh, there we have um, chain rule again. We have omega uh, dot or d omega over dt, that's angular uh, acceleration. And then we have um, omega occurs twice. Um, uh, order the squared. Okay, so so this was this was for the this type of uh, uh, mechanism, the Kempfeller mechanism. And then we have another sample problem, sixteen four, where uh, there is a disc that is uh, rolling without a, without slip on the on a surface on a on a rectangular surface, and um we uh, so uh, there is the initial position of the center of mass we want to we want to relate center of mass with the angular velocity of the disk now this disk performs um, a general uh, general uh, planar motion because we have both rotation and translation um, and the line that is, uh, monitor the angle which is monitor relative to the vertical via this angle theta okay it's going to rotate by angle uh, by angle theta and you recognize them being the same due to you know these line being parallel intersected by a uh, line um, uh, noted as R and uh, what do we have we have um, we have the rectilinear ultimately we we, uh, we have the rectilinear displacement of the uh, of center of the disk being equal to the length of this arch uh, shown in red which is equal to theta times r so um, the displacement of the center of the disk is going to be r times theta uh, and uh, so displacement of it's r times theta. If we want velocity and acceleration, we need to take the uh, uh, velocity and acceleration, linear velocity and linear acceleration velo uh, of uh, the center of the disk, take the time derivative once and the second time of the uh, position equation. And lastly, it's this problem with, um, with a hydraulically actuated uh, heavy window, it says. Um, and um, although S is the input, they say what is the uh, what is the angular velocity and angular acceleration of the window when theta is 30 degrees. Okay, so we're given the time rate of change of S. So uh, ds over dt or uh, s dot the uh, extension of the hydraulic cylinder is 0.5 constant meter per second. Uh, the, um, the constraint equation is sometimes called here. It's uh, so we have we deal with triangle. We have an angle, um, and we have a side that changes. So here, best is to use the law of cosines. So the law of cosine was written for. Uh, S squared equals uh, this length OA squared plus length OB squared minus 2 times uh, cosine theta times OA times OB. All right, so the, the law of cosines. And after some uh, simplification, we, uh, or some, uh, yeah, we, we, we get this equation 1 uh, that relates S to theta. So we, this allows us to calculate uh, extension of the hydraulic cylinder when the angle is 30 degrees. So this would be the answer. And now uh, taking uh, time derivative of equation 1, it gives us a relationship between the uh, ds over dt, the uh, rate at which the hydraulic uh, cylinder expands, um, and the 
angular velocity of the window measured by the angle theta. Right? And for uh, the calculated or the given angle theta for uh, S that was calculated um, corresponding uh, length S of the hydrox cylinder, we can calculate uh, we can calculate uh, d theta over dt that is omega. And now taking the second time derivative of um, of the velocity equation. Uh, allows us to calculate the angular acceleration. So chain rule, uh, recognize what uh, uh, what are variable, what change with time. It allows us to it allows you to uh, uh, to solve uh, for velocity and acceleration. Okay, so this is. Uh, this is pretty much it for as for the theory, and uh, th it's best illustrated with uh, with examples. So um, I'm going to uh, to do additional problems on circular motion, and I'm going to uh, also solve um, one or two problems from uh, absolute motion analysis. Okay, so this will go to YouTube, and recording stops here. Thanks for watching.